Open membrane style. Open membrane style. Open membrane style. Membrane style. How to transfer happens in three different ways. On most of the facilities, you're simply fusion and the waves. These waves do not require the same kind of phosphate molecules. Passing through must have no child. Membrane. Oh. Oh. Open membrane side. Open membrane style. Membrane style. Open membrane style. Oh, oh, oh. oh. I like to move it, move it. I like to move it, move it. I like to move it, move it. I like to move it. All molecules across the membrane. Original movement across the membrane, man. I love how all our molecules are across the membrane. And when they cross it, they cross it nice and steep and easy. Alright? Movement is smooth and it means no energy. The steeper the gradient, the more you diffuse. Moment you lose when you have too much of sun. The greater the area, the more they diffuse. Physically fit, physically fit, physically, structurally, chemically. Physically fit, physically fit, physically, structurally, chemically. Remember the nice, steep, and mosaic. Big ship on the cell with a big surface. Nice, steep, and mosaic. Big ship on the cell with a big surface. Like to move it, move it. I like to move it, move it. I like to move it, move it. I like to. Hi guys, Biochem SR here, and today we are going to be looking at active transport. This type of transport requires ATP, since it is going against the concentration gradient. That is, it is going from a low to a high concentration. Now you should all know what ATP is. You probably learned it since form 3, so I am not going to tell you. You need to pause the video and go and find out. I am going to wait. Alright, so now that you know what ATP is, we can move on. Active transport is important because it brings in essential molecules. To help you remember what molecules are brought in, you can use the anagram GAIN, G-A-I-N, and this stands for glucose, amino acids, ions, and nucleotides. 
Active transport is also important because it rids the cells of unwanted molecules, example, sodium from urine in the kidneys. It maintains internal conditions different from the environment. It regulates the volume of cells by controlling osmotic potential. It controls cellular pH and it re-establishes concentration gradients to run facilitated diffusion, example, the sodium potassium pump and proton pumps. Now, active transport are of two types primary and secondary active transports. The most popular example of primary active transport is the sodium potassium pump. This is what we're going to be looking at today. It is a P-class pump, which means that it is a gene family that exhi exhibits sequence homology. The sodium potassium P-class pump now is an anti-port pump. This means that it transports two molecules in opposite directions. In this case, the two molecules are sodium and potassium. Now, to illustrate the mechanism of the sodium-potassium pump, we are going to use a Plato model. So the transport of sodium and potassium requires proteins with receptors. These proteins have four conformational states, E1, E1P, E2P, and E2 states. So now I'm going to show you a little demonstration. Okay, so here we have our Plato model. So we see the membrane, the little phospholipids, the pink plasticine is the sodium molecules, and blue represents potassium. So the protein starts off being in the E1 state inside of the cell. The sodium is able to bind to the receptor when it is in this state. Binding causes the protein to become phosphorylated. So we have ATP going to ADP because we're using a phosphate molecule. Phosphorylation causes the protein to change its shape from the E1 to the E1P state. This causes the binding site of the protein to face the outside of the cell. And so three sodium are deposited outside of the cell membrane. While facing the outside in its new E1P state, two potassium are able to now bind to the receptor. The binding of potassium causes another change in conformation. That is E1P to E2P. Binding of potassium causes dephosphorylation of the protein. This dephosphorylation causes a change in shape from the E2P to the E2 and the protein faces inside the cell once more. The change to the E2 conformation causes the potassium to be released inside of the cell. This release of potassium allows the protein to revert back to its original E1 state and so it is able to transport sodium once again. So we see this cycle starting over again. So primary active transport feeds directly into secondary active transport, in which case we are going to be demonstrating the sodium glucose symporter pump. That is the GLUT2 pump. This is usually found in the intestinal lumen. So remember that from the sodium potassium pump, the concentration gradient formed when three sodium goes to the outside of the membrane. So we see a lot of sodium in the outside there. So this concentration gradient causes the sodium to move from a high concentration on the outside of the cell back to the inside, into the cytoplasm, where we have a lower concentration. So the energy formed from the hydrolysis of ATP allows the glucose to be pumped into the cytoplasm as well. And this goes against the concentration gradient from low to high. So we see the two sodium plus the glucose going there simultaneously. They're both being transported to the inside of the cell simultaneously. Now this was an example of a symporter pump. That means that two molecules were transported at the same time in the same direction. Now for secondary active transport, we also have an antiporter pump. And this pump shows the, the sodium calcium exchanger in which one calcium exists for every three sodium. So we see we just need to change back our receptors there. We have three sodium in the receptors and one calcium. So for every calcium that is exiting, that's going on the outside, three sodium will be entering, that is coming on the inside. So there you have it. That was two examples. Of, well, we had primary active transport and secondary active transport. We showed the sodium potassium pump for primary and the sodium glucose symporter for secondary as well as the sodium calcium antiporter. So there we have it. 
that would be the um, first phase which was active transport. So stay tuned, give us feedback. Pinhead, can you remember what is active transport? Of course. Active transport is the ATP dependent movement of substances across the cell membrane against a concentration gradient. But, Pinhead, and there are different types of active transport? Um, yes, dolls. There are primary and secondary active transport. Dolls don't beat up. Primary active transport is when substances uses the energy derived from the hydrolysis of ATP directly as a driving force. Secondary active transport, however, uses gradients that were set up from the primary pump. Omega spinhead. The sodium potassium pump facilitates primary active transport. While the sodium glucose symporter pump facilitates secondary active transport. Plus substances also cross the membrane by passive transport. Pump it up. Pump it up. Pieces. All of this transport it have been head. LOL dolls. But of corpses. Oh, I remember pinhead. Simple diffusion. Facilitated diffusion and osmosis are all types of passive transport. Yes, pinhead, I understand now. 